Everybody's Tyler here at Score Signature, checking in 3131V. This is an awesome team. Drum roll, please, coming in from Florida. Excellent award already, and also we're finalists at Haunted just a little while ago, too, so congrats on that. And looking really good here as well, too. Uh, what really drew me to this, double ring Lady Brown, so excited to dive more into that. But a lot of great stuff, too, with their ring and gold rush mech, and just a very well-built robot. So we can't wait to dive more into this machine, everything that's gone into it, and their success coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Drill Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information. Aiden, let's talk about that two-ring Lady Brown. I was super impressed when I saw it on the field. So it's talking about uh, how it's working out for you, anything that you did to really make it happen, that sort of thing. Yeah, of course. So the way this thing works is it's basically a uh, basic Lady Brown right here. So I can raise it like this, with the macro like that, and then I can put one ring in, just like that. And of course, I can just score it like normal. Uh, we have the compression here with the mesh, and of course, we have the plastic on either side to sort of hold the ring in place. I can score it like so with the macro, and then I can put it back down like that. It's a pretty simple uh, 12 to 36 uh, gear ratio on 200 RPM motors. So it's running about 66 RPM. So that's how it works with a single load. For double load, it's pretty simple. We basically just clone the top part and just put it on some standoffs on the bottom. So I can load the first one. And then using another button right under the uh, first button, I can raise this up here like that. And then load in the second ring, just like that. And they both sort of stay where the hole is kind of lined up like that. That way it makes the scoring on the wall stick as easy as possible. Did you have to make any sacrifices by adding this on at all? Like, I mean, package-wise, I think it's very good. I love the standoffs you put on that too, it's great. Mm -hmm. But were there any sacrifices you had to make in order to accommodate two rings? Um, not really, no. The main thing is we actually made this arm pretty long. It's 25 long, whereas most teams run a sort of 20, 21, 22 long. And this allows us to score in the autonomous period, which really helps um, for like Elim's autos, for Gold Rush, we score on the wall second autonomous. But packaging wise, no, we just added the second stage and made sure it could go down a bit further for that. And just having that more reach, I think, even in uh, driver control, just makes it so much easier to score as well, too. Yeah, so many exactly. teams that they have to get exactly the right angle mm -hmm. or something. I think that gives you guys a lot of versatility, mm -hmm. which is great, too. Um, we were talking earlier, you also have a color sorting mech uh, yeah, on your exactly. robot. Um, so the way color sort works is we have this optical sensor down in the bot here, which basically just detects the color of any ring coming in. It also detects um, the distance because, you know, the lighting here, sometimes the lighting can mess with the color sort. So if we clamp a goal here, you want to clamp the goal, Henry? So you can clamp the goal here. Right now the robot is set to red. We can intake the red ring like that, it goes on normally, but the blue ring, it just flies off uh, over the table apparently. So this allows us to be really versatile um, and driver because I don't have to avoid any of the wrong color rings. I can just drive through any stacks I see and not worry about the color. We also have this in the autonomous period, which allows us to not score any rings for our opponent. As a driver then, uh, do you have any concerns in regards to like ejecting rings outside of the field or anything by having that type of color sort? Um, not really, since mainly the rings are kind of concentrated in the middle of the field. So the only concern would be when we're in the corner, but usually we're clearing out the corner, so the goal is not really facing the perimeter of the field, so we don't really have that problem. Yeah, fair enough. Now, Misha, talk to me about this uh, ring rush uh, that you're running as well too, and then we'll be talking about some changes that led up to this robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, for the ring rush, we're running uh, this two kind of screw joints banded back so that we have a single acting piston. And it really helps us a lot. It really allows us to get those extra points during auto. And additionally, disrupts the opponent's auto by, as you can see here, if you push the ball forward, it pushes the rings that are on top over to the opponent's territory or the opponent's side. And then when we just drive back, the piston will be acting down. It'll pull the rings with it, allowing us to get these two rings really fast. And it's almost like guaranteed at the beginning of the match, which has really helped so far in like getting that autonomous bonus, especially in Elims. So yeah, in terms of how we um, or like what led up to this. I think what specifically led up to this is throughout the season, um, 
during multiple competitions, we had moments where we would go for the stack in the middle and we'd accidentally, for example, intake an opponent's ring or by that time the opponent had their ring rush already done and that would lead to uh, us not even being able to uh, intake our own rings. So we just decided to devise this mechanism to kind of make up for that. So. Yeah. One thing I want to ask you on the composition of this, I noticed in here you're running like a, a sprocket with some chain oh, yeah, on this, yeah. right? Like what made you choose that versus like an omni wheel or some other method potentially having that? Uh, I think we chose like sprocket and chain just because um, they're, they're, I mean, for one thing, they're pretty thin, and the other thing, they're pretty light. Like, for example, an Omni wheel, they're much heavier and they're much bulkier, which would make it a lot harder to fit in this kind of area. Um, so I think that's the reason why. Why we added the chain is just to make sure it doesn't dig into the field that much. So, yeah. Henry, your Gold Rush Max has been working out great so far, so let's detail uh, what's gone into that. Uh, and then, you know, any anything when you're thinking about, like, a, from a Matt's strategy, did you make any changes coming in here to score at all uh, for uh, that? Coming into score, we didn't make any real changes. We've tried to stick with what we've had and just mostly tune those autos. And an important part in the, the autonomous period has been our goal rush. Um, we merged the Doinker and the goal rush, um, especially moving into all these uh, uh, SIGs, especially Haunted. Um, we noticed that having that third MOGO meant a lot for how we would actually play the match out. Um, and it was a huge advantage, especially in these kind of big name matches, the finals, uh, semi semis. We needed that third MOGO, and uh, being able to utilize a goal rush uh, has been very valuable to us in terms of how the match actually plays out. Can we see how the uh, goal rush mech works? Yeah. So we have, again, the, um, it's just it's on a single piston, um, and it, hits, it makes contact with the floor. We utilize the fact that there is a little tab under the uh, MOGO itself. We drive under it, and then we release the piston which um, artificially just grabs onto that, onto the MOGO. And it has been really, it's a simple way of doing it. Uh, it doesn't requ uh, require a, an additional clamp so we can save weight uh, from that extra piston. Uh, it's a passive way to do it, and we have found that it really works with how we want to play out the match. Last thing I want to ask is your team has uh, been to multiple signature events. Yeah. For your team, or, or maybe for others who haven't been to a signature round before, why is it important to come to these? Like, what is the experience like for you to come to this and have this signature event experience overall? Well, in the immediate season, it's very, it's very valuable because it allows you to kind of taste the meta. It allows you to get a feel for what competing against, you know, big name teams are. Um, and just, it really prepares you for what Worlds is going to be like. Um, but especially for us, because we're a really young team. This is our second year and I'm still a freshman. Uh, so in the future, being able to get this early experience against good teams is going to shape how we play uh, future seasons and what will inspire us to play a certain way. It shapes how we do everything. You, it's very important to go up against good competition so you can make those mistakes that you will probably make at Worlds. And you get the experience competition from all over, too, which I think is yeah. really cool, right? So, General Police, congratulations on a phenomenal machine so far. We can't wait to see how you do here at Score, but doing a great job so far. So good luck here and, of course, throughout the rest of the competition season. Thanks a lot, guys. Right. Thank you. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.